Hello everybody and welcome to the last round of 16 match in the World Cup. RTSD versus Eel in a necromantic mirror. RTSD with a, the black necromantic team. Well, it's actually really dark purple. Uh, won the toss and chose to receive. Eel in light blue and white. Very French. Um, RTSD qualified from UKBBL and is British. Uh, does not play in Champs Ladder. Ilm has a 60% win rate in Champs Ladder, qualified from Ligue Francaise DBB, and is unsurprisingly French. Uh, this is a very ballsy move from RTSD here, going straight for the fleshy, because you know he's, the fleshy's not going to stand firm, so he's going to be stuck in the white, um, unless he gets to pile on, but even then he's going to be down. So yeah, that was a bit... That was a bit... A bit ballsy, I think I might have just taken like, you know, an LOS block to keep him safe, but... Ah, but then there's this guy behind, so... Tricky. But RTSD throwing caution to the wind, I mean, it's fair enough, you've got to be a bit lucky to, to win in this format anyway. Um, what uh, what Eon could do here is, he could blitz around the back, put a player here, blitz around the back, chain the wolf to here, and then get like a 4 assist foul on him. Or at least a 3 assist foul. Um, as it is, he chooses to. Uh, well, he may maybe if he got a power, he would have done a two assist foul there. Um, but he chooses to just kind of like control the wolf, which is it's something that I like to try to do when someone's got a frenzy player that you can kind of easily control with like frenzy traps. Um, so skill wise. After the first round, oh yeah, so RTSD obviously started with a mighty blow on his on his wolf, took piling took piling on after the first round, and after the second round, I believe he just took he took something not very exciting. Yeah, guard on a white, which to be fair he needed. And um, build wise, he only uh, RTSD has two ghouls, but only one white. Twelve players, and he had three rerolls, but just got an extra one. Um, which is maybe is the build that I like the most actually. Wow, double skulls there. Into a push. Into another double skulls. <laughs> so while it wasn't really a quad skulls, it kind of was. And I don't know if he'd really done safe moves first. I don't think. I don't I mean, maybe he's necessarily think so, but he is out of range anyway, so it's not not a complete disaster. Um Eelm, on the other hand, has 13 players but only two rerolls. Um, he has gone one go but has, has got two whites. And they've both got, they've both got two dogs. Um, now, interestingly, he's blitzing with a block of mighty blow. He's, he's, he's blitzing a dodge player and he's blitzing with a mighty blow on anyway. Um, Eelm started with block on a flesh golem. And then after the first game, he used his double to give block to his wolf. And then and then for this match, he gave tackle to a wolf. Um, now, obviously, had he started with block on the wolf, he could have then used his double to give it mighty blow, and then used the normal to give block to the flesh golem. So he's basically given up mighty blow there. Um, one in nine on that block. And three re-rolls. I guess you can re-roll it. And one in nine on that one, so... You know, pretty pretty bad dice from both people so far. I mean, the two double scores are worse than two one in nines, of course. Um, so yeah, that's. I really don't like this this tackle. You know, the, the kind of the whole point of wolves is it is the the doubles. You know, now obviously RTSD has his super safe reliable one and his let's try to get lucky one. Um, I don't really like that either, although obviously, you know, it doesn't suit my kind of play. This was a very risky 3 plus to start the turn to get a blitz, that was pretty risky. Pretty risky. Um, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't suit my kind of play, but I mean, it's not bad, though, is it? You can get lucky. And, you know, that's 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 the thing, isn't it, with, uh, with this format. It's probably going to be the luckiest person who wins. So, <laughs> because the skill levels of everybody are pretty comparable. Um, you know, in Blood Bowl, good players will still be bad players, nine times out of ten or whatever. Or about eight times out of ten, it turns out. But, um, 
but you know, there's when when people are pretty both pretty good, it's it's more likely going to come down to dice. So he's using three players to knock down the wolf, lock down the wolf here, which I think is a bit excessive. Um, but you know, fair play to him. Quite good that this guy had stand firm. If he didn't have stand firm, obviously he could just power into there and get straight into the ball. But the stand firm means that even if he powered him, he'd only get a one dice on the ball. Um, but you know, maybe he should have done. Maybe he should have gone for that one dice on the ball. Though there, he did just <laughs> he did just quad skull. So um, <laughs> so you know, that's uh, that's something, isn't it? Quad skull then get then get a zombie injured. Um, <laughs> so wow. So effectively RTSD quad skull by rolling double skull, push double skull. Now Ilma's double skulled and effectively one in eighty one by rolling two one in nine at the same time. And now he's down two players. So now I think I think Ilma's definitely had the worst luck this half. Yeah, uh, you know. We got that second removal. They both had kind of bad bad block dice a little bit, but Anyway, that was good anyway. You know making the cage with the fleshies made it good. Um if he'd made it with a non fleshy that would have been horrible non cage and he would have been busted. But you know, to be fair, I think maybe Zim could have still gone for it. He could have he could have gone for the two dice, get the pound, get a one dice. You know, things could happen, couldn't they? Like you've got to give yourself the chance to get lucky, haven't you? And and RDSD certainly done that with a claw palm. Rerolling that dodge away there. I guess he wouldn't have done if he only had two rerolls left. But using the extra one from the cheering fans there, and I, I guess Ian uh, uh, wouldn't have rerolled the first one in eighty-one if he only had two rerolls. So yeah, it looks like he's just going to try and stall this one out, really. Um, trying to screen off and stall. Which is pretty tough down two players, but then, you know, if he goes high risk down two players, then that can be even worse, can't it? So, t t tough spot for him. And again, one of the reasons why I didn't want to take a bash team to this... this uh, in this format, because there's no... There's no skill involved, you know, and this isn't this isn't being offensive to anybody. There's no skill involved in the fact that RTSD has made two cards. Uh, well, uh, two removals. It cards that's regenerated in KL. You know, there's, there's there's no skill involved in that. It's pretty much just dice. Over the long term, bad play, you know, good players will cause more cards than bad players because they'll engineer more blocks and everything like that. And he does have a claw palm, you know, so he's got the odds in his favour to, to cause more cards, but still... There's no, there's no skill in the fact that he's made these two removals, and and now all of a sudden Elm has got to play his ass off to even have a chance down two players. So whereas elves of any variety would be like no. down to two players, it's not ideal. <laughs> it's not ideal, but we can still win. Um, whereas and now they're down to eight players, so now it's, the drive's pretty much done because they've got. <laughs> They've got guys who are moving for agility too, and well, in fact, they don't anymore. <laughs> At least he's only lost zombies, but he's got his positionals, but it's not much else. Is it? Good positioning of the of the uh, flesh golems, I think. But this is horrible, isn't it? This guy's this guy's trapped on two. These two are trapped on one. And uh, so while that ends up three versus three, it's still a bit crap. Two versus three, now you can move him. Just looks like he's going to blitz the ghoul. And here he just doesn't have enough players, does he, really? I mean, maybe, but... He's done quite a good... Quite a good job, actually, of covering up that way, but there is a route through here, isn't there? If he gets the power, which he does. 
It's going to go swing back to the middle. Interesting. Oh, no, no, no. He's going to go for the pat knock down there. Yeah, okay. That's pretty good. But yeah, I, th I thought he'd go up through here. Not too far forward, though. Okay. He's got plenty of time. Two turns to go. I think I would have wanted to get further forward than that, but, you know, wanting to get forward and having to keep it safe <laughs> are two different things. So now this is every every zombie gun, isn't it, for um, Eel? He only has his positionals left, which is seven of them. So he's he's given he's given the, the hit on his palm. Is is that a distraction? Decoy octopus. He could um he could GFI to blitz with his fleshy and get the fleshy on the ball. Maybe that would be an idea. On the other hand, with seven players, maybe he just gives up on the score and gets hits the mic get, takes the mighty blow hit on the other wolf. I think that's that's absolutely fine because you know seven players is pretty much. It's pretty hard to defend with seven players. What with ghouls being movement seven and all. Risky stand up with that ghoul. Maybe he could have not stood up with this ghoul whatsoever. Or, I think he should, probably shouldn't have made that dodge either as well. Um, because this just makes it so easy for, uh, for RTSD to advance up this side. I think maybe that should have been a blitz. To, uh, Another one bites the dust. Uh, maybe that should have been a blitz to just get his wolf up, I think. I think he wants as many men forward as, as he can. But he's got just about enough. Just about enough to get in range. GFI don't have to have an X cage, do you? There is the 5 plus dodge in, though. It does leave the 5 plus dodge in. And he goes for the blitz there instead of just a dodge. He could have just dodged away, couldn't he? Um, so, yeah, this is this here, what I would do. <laughs> and again, maybe this isn't what I would do. Maybe this is what I think is optimal. Because there's, there's, there's you know, there's, there's ways of going around it. You could either blitz with the... Uh, Ah, oh, well, it's kind of hard. You would like to get the flesh golem here with a double GFI, but then he can't do the blitz. And then, so, you know, you'd have to put in the wolf there, blitz with him, and then get the fleshy in, or something like that. So getting the fleshy in to here or here is, is something that's good. The other option is just the, uh, the wolf. You can just five plus in for one dice. Even this one, you could go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight GFI for one dice. Um... You could have the guard here so that when you push him, the guard cancels out. So it's a one dice into one dice. And, you know, I think he should have done something ballsier than what he did. Uh, so, you know, five plus... <coughs> Excuse me. Five plus dodging isn't, isn't that bad. You know, it's 55% with a reroll. And then the one dice is a 50-50 with block and tackle. So... I think that was maybe maybe could have been his play because I mean to be fair he, he needed two flesh golems here because he would have just blitzed with everyone whichever one didn't have stand firm so if he'd got the fleshy there he would have still done this play if he had the fleshy there he just blitzes this guy because then he's not protected by the guard so it was it was always going to be easy for him to clear you know and and while Eel went for kind of the standard conservative play or whatever, it was it it was too easy for RTSD to get out of it, wasn't it? You know, just a couple of two dice blocks and a GFI. Um, that's where I think you know, I think versus good players, um, both chaos fail. Um, good players or you know. You know, as everyone in this in this 
World Cup should be. I think you've got to sometimes you know, take the risks yourself. Everyone says it's better to let your opponents roll the dice. Well, it's not better to let them roll the dice <laughs> if all they've got to do is to make two two dice blocks and a two plus dodge, a uh, two plus GFI, you know, that's like, that's incredibly likely to work. So while you might think that a, a dodge into the cage and a one dicer is low odds to work, it's a hell of a lot better than just letting your opponent, you know, make a, you know, it's, it's better than one in 36. So, um, while it's kind of a good rule of thumb, it's also essentially meaningless to <laughs> to do that. Now, of course, m maybe what he could have even done is uh, taken Juggernaut on a wolf. Um, because, you know, he'd, he'd seen the draw and he knew there were other Necros around. Um, like he did, actually, because RTSD played a Necro Mirror before this. So Elm absolutely knew he was going to be playing Necros. So he could have taken a Juggernaut wolf. And uh, while... I hate Juggernaut, really, as a skill, because it's just so narrow in its application. The fact that you have, you know you're going to be playing against Flesh Golems, and you just can't really push them to get the one turn. You know, the one turn here is, actually isn't that bad. Because <laughs> he's got Frenzy, so he could have pushed him into there and into there. So, I take that back because RTSD has basically given him a chance at it. Normally, <laughs> normally Flesh Golems mean you don't get a chance at a one turn. But actually, actually, the that is one thing you've got to bear in mind against frenzy. If you're protecting against a one turn, if you put a player there, it gives him an angle. Um, so obviously, he just used the perfect defense to get his guys not hit by claw, which seems fair. And with that, with that guy not coming back, I think maybe I would have put the wolves on the line that you know just kept a, a white back. To uh, you know, in case of a riot, I would have had both walls forward, and then you could have made two blocks if there wasn't a riot, and one blitz if there was, or something. So let's have a look at this three, four, five, six, seven. I think he should absolutely bring in an assist and then block with a block with a zombie here. He goes for the two dice block into a two dicer. Gets a double score. As it happened, he had his reroll, so it didn't matter. But I was like, deserves to die that werewolf. <laughs> 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 for not making, you know, not. He had two guards there. He had loads of players. He could have, he could have made three dicers um, and didn't. <laughs> But he did make a three dice there in the end. So. And these two kills stay out again. So. The zombie isn't as important. But it does stop him having 11 players. But having the ghoul miss is really horrible. So they were, you know, 50% 50, 50 each time. So each one was only 25% to stay out. So with between both of them, that's like one in sixteen, isn't it? Um, that's pretty unlucky to have them both stay out, and that does put him on ten players. So it is relevant, even though the other ones are a zombie. But really huge missing the goal. Um, meanwhile, RTSD only had twelve players and still has eleven. So this is the thing, and it's so random. You know, he probably thinks, "Oh, I've got a more reliable team having thirteen players," but turns out, nope. Nope, you'll be men down thanks to crappy KO rolls. <laughs> there is the option to go for the 5 plus dodge here to surf, uh, surf the ghouls, but that's, that's stupid, isn't it? Something you can't really do without dodging Jilly 4. The dodge there to surf. Um, but yeah, you know, this is going to be a tough drive for Ian, really. Um, no ghouls versus 2. Another perfect defence. <laughs> he does have the extra white, but still. Very it's gonna be very tough for him here. But yeah, I do think maybe maybe Eon played a little bit too passively on defence. And of course that's easy to say when you're just watching a game without any emotional investment and without tunnel vision. Um I certainly get, I get tunnel vision even watching a, a lot of the time, so, you know, 
a lot of things aren't considered in the heat of the moment. Fleshies here are pretty good spots, aren't they? Pretty good fleshies. Sucks a reroll, one of his two rerolls, and doesn't do anything to him. Disgusting. Now that is a weird move, isn't it? He leaves, he opens up the red carpet for, for RTSD there, and I'm sure RTSD's gonna blitz this this way. Um, that seems very weird to leave that open. You could tag everybody and base the ball as well. I think that's what I would do now. I think I would go balls to the wall here. Uh, I think I would have. Yeah, ghoul on this guy. Blitz the. Wolf. Oh, in fact, we can put the you can put the ghoul on his on his white, blitz the white, base the wolf, and then base this. I'm pretty sure you can reach one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, G five, G five. I'll be used to reroll anyway, so so the double G five basing basing wouldn't have really worked. And this way, he doesn't get based by the wolf, which is probably what he wanted. So now he, maybe he would have based the ball um, if he hadn't used the reroll. Now he just keeps him as a safety. But still, it's still a lot of pressure. You know, his team split in half. Got three over here and some over there, and it's it's pretty. That was a wild move, I thought, by Eel. Does get a hit back. And KOs him. So that's a that's a huge removal. Huge removal for Eel. Absolutely massive. But he's having you see he's taking this tackler out of the game, isn't he? To carry. I think I would have made these more like you can't you can't carry with a with a white actually. <laughs> because they've both got guards, so yeah. He's he's got no choice but to carry with this wolf. So if if you know I was that is actually huge for the ghoul stayed up. And another one he loses there. Just off a rando block. Facilitated by the perfect defense, really. So this is quite a nice way to get two dice on the ball. Quite like that. But his sure hands guy is is gone. Um, so there's no recovery if he blocks it. Since he made this block first, I think I would have blocked this one and got the zombie in. Rather than that. So he used the reroll to try and get the knockdown, which really surprises me because it puts him on one reroll. And I mean, yeah, he, okay, it's bad if he gets the ball down. He's agility three, he's only got one reroll. But I'm not sure I would have, I would have rerolled that, to be honest. I think I would have also probably followed to try and keep him more busy. I mean, he's in a, he's in a really bad situation now, you know. Straight up blocks with a carrier. Maybe that was a misclick. Maybe he was trying to blitz, but just blocks. And he he had to get the push on the first dice to get the uh, to get away from RTSD's team. So maybe maybe that was meant to be a blitz. And he was gonna he was gonna run around. Who knows? Maybe it wasn't. <laughs> maybe that was his plan. But uh, it was definitely risky. I quite like this because even though he's got a uh, a player based as the cage corner, he can he can block the wolf because unless he gets cast by this uh, flesh golem, his his dead body will still <laughs> keep him part of the cage, won't he? So you know, using the stand firm well there, and stunning the wolf is pretty big because one wolf's out. So so next turn he can he's got he's stunned a ghoul and he's stunned a white uh, wolf, so he can absolutely make a brick next turn. Problem for him is it's maybe he's a bit early. But 
think he's still got to do it just because he's in such a such a bad spot really cheeky one nice blitz just goes the eggs and only get served <laughs> Surely he wouldn't have re-rolled that, that seemed pretty greedy to do that before the two that he had. Oh, that was okay. Yeah, push would have been alright, so that's fine to do that Look first. This is very risky because if he gets a push, he's stuck on the fleshy. But he makes it. Yeah, because he couldn't do it with the, with the white. He had he had to do it with a but pretty risky. Might have to score next turn, might he? So you know he's going to have to do RTSD. He's going to have to do everything he can to force the score next turn because RTSD really, really, really wants to give him no option but to score here. Um, because if you can get another two, start, turn or two out of this, he's looking pretty good. Kind of irrelevant two dice block. I mean, it's something you do as kind of a reflex. He's got block, might as well do it. But another risk that you know maybe he didn't have to take yet. Like so much more important to dodge this guy out than, than Kaz, this zombie. So a pretty huge dodge out, um, and a huge GFI as well. So that makes it pretty difficult for him to stall. He could run back. But this guy's there, and it's, it's, his team's all over the place, isn't it? And he's down loads of players. So, <laughs> I think, I think go, I don't hate going for the score there. Um, as much as it gives RTSD four turns, which he could definitely, definitely score in. Wolf stays killed, though. And they both stay out. <laughs> so now that's what, one in 64 that, of them both staying out. Um, now, really, the only thing that the only thing that matters is the one in eight chance of the ghoul. But still, the fact that they both stay out does keep him on ten plays instead of eleven. So, so the zombie does become relevant when he fails every time. <laughs> So yeah, horribly unlucky to miss his ghoul from the KO. And, and and that's to be honest, that's kind of what I hate about KOs because sometimes KOs are cars and sometimes they're not. <laughs> and maybe, you know, KOs should automatically come back or or something. I d I don't know. It's you know, Blood Ball is random, it's it's part of the appeal is the randomness, isn't it? But it's very frustrating when you take a KO and it, it, it's actually a Kaz. But then, of course, your opponent could just roll higher and made a cast. So, so that, you know, it's not a huge deal. But it just does feel unfair. <laughs> it does feel unfair when a KO lasts the whole game like that. Two KOs of that. So the, these these KOs were actually unregen cars in the end. <laughs> So yeah, four turns. Um, I do quite like it, even the zombie there, but I don't think that's going to dissuade him from following. I, mean, it doesn't. I think it's maybe better against edge teams or something, or have a fleshy there. Um, once again, RTSD looks unafraid to blitz, to blitz um, 
fleshies. I mean, this is a 75% knockdown, to be fair. But again, the, the, the follow gets him, gets him based up. Another one gone, so down on nine players. I mean, to be fair, RTSD's on ten now. Stone. And yeah, this is this is a frenzy trap, isn't it? Two into one. Gets the pow. Just the classic wolf play of of blitzing even though you're gonna have to dodge away. Um <laughs> people do it to me all the time. <laughs> Never seem to fail the dodge. <laughs> Pretty annoying when people do that, I think. Because you know, he could have just he could have just blitzed better, or, well, safer, couldn't he? Uh, but those kind of greedy blitzes always annoy me when they work out. <laughs> and this this was a frenzy trap as well, wasn't it? Uh, I mean, I say a frenzy trap, it's still two dice and no one dice, but still. I mean, to be fair, Elm has less players, so it's harder for him to do that. I think this was a bit of a mistake. I think there might have been better. That's harsh, isn't it? Or, or, or even there, I think he's not really doing anything here. So maybe there would have been better. Or here, or here, or something. I don't know, just slightly. That's very nitpicky. Um, but I just don't see him really doing anything here that he wouldn't be doing in kind of any of these kind of spells. Which would have stopped <laughs> this this blitz and run through here. So yeah, I think I think one square back or there or there would have been better for him. And as it is, he lets. So you see, so I say that's nitpicky. Yet here comes out the SD with his whole team through that gap. So and he just really wasn't doing anything there because even if this guy's powered. If he's back one square, he's still got the screen. Um, if he's back here, they still got the screen if he doesn't get the power. So it's uh, it was a nice turn there, to be fair, for RTSD. He made, the, he made four G GFIs there to, to make everything safe. But yeah, that was a bit of a risky turn. Again, he could have probably gone for the five plus dodge in at one dice. Which is probably something you should be thinking about. Because just playing it safe like this. It's just not really getting the job done. He? He's got. He's. Let's have a pause. Let's not, not pause on that. <laughs> let's pause this. He's got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So he, he can score this turn. And he can go diagonally like this. So, you know. He's got the diagonals. He's got this half covered perfectly, but he's he's weak here, and gets gets the incredible one dice pow there. <laughs> Five plus to get that, and then um, he makes one GFI, and but he still can't cover it really. Even two GFIs would have uh, wouldn't have made much difference here. He's still going to get the two dice. And on a push, he still just gets a dodge with with a dodge reroll. Gets the pow. He's two GFIs away from from the quarterfinals. Oh! <laughs> gets it too. Unbelievable. So now, with only one turn, like he was able to score on turn fifteen because um, he had kicked this half. So it's only the riot that is going to scupper, scupper RTSD. Now all three come back. See, and now, statistically, three out of nine KO rolls isn't too crazy, you know? You'd kind of expect four or five. Well, four and a half, wouldn't you, on four pluses? You'd expect four and a half out of nine. Three, you can't get four and a half out of nine, so you could reasonably expect four or five out of nine. And he's rolled three out of nine, which looks absolutely fine. 
But in reality, it was zero out of six, and it was horribly unlucky on, on those. And I think overall, I think maybe Eel was played a little bit too passively. Uh, but I think he's definitely had the worst of the dice, for sure. In my opinion. <laughs> I think they both had uh, bad block dice, but still. Not even going for the one turn here, but he could. Because he could he could blitz this zombie, push him twice to there, which then pushes somebody out of here. And then they get blocked to there, then they get blocked to there. But the problem is filling in this square, so... They'd, oh, they'd have to block this guy as well to fill in that square. And then they could push him to here. And, you know, he would, he would have very small chances, but I think he should have absolutely gone for the one turn. Um, but then it's hard to say, isn't it? At the end of the day, the chance of scoring the one turn is so low. And you've got to do so much to, like, push them forward to here or whatever. Maybe it is better just to hope for a riot. Um, but he didn't get the riot. And that is the quarter-final lineup complete. Um... So I'll be doing my predictions for the quarterfinals as soon as they've picked their next skills. And I will be covering all of the quarterfinals live on Twitch and replays on YouTube. So, so yeah, keep your eyes peeled. It's a funny expression, isn't it? <laughs> Why would you want to peel your eyes? <laughs> So, I mean, this was a bit, I don't know, you know, it's fair enough, isn't it? It's it's fair enough him doing what he wants on his turns. Like, I would have just passed the turn because I can't do anything. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's fair enough people want to play out their, out their last turn in the World Cup. I think it's, it's absolutely fine, isn't it? I do think that, I, I personally, I think the format was fine. Not criticising the format that was chosen. I personally would have liked 32 qualifiers. Um, which it instantly would, would be, you know, 32 people wouldn't like that anyway, you know, so I'm not saying my way is better. But I would have preferred 32 quali people qualifying and have it just like the actual World Cup, you know, so you have a group stage where you can play three games. So, you know, everybody who qualified would have got three games out of it because it was a lot of work to qualify. And obviously it would have been harder to qualify, kind of. With, uh, with 32 players, but to go to all that trouble, I mean, some people entered 12 qualifiers, some people entered eight, you know. Um, if, if all that trouble to qualify and then you play one game and you're out, m most people, you know, didn't get to play three games, did they? So it's like, I don't know, I think that might have been better for the people who qualified, but then obviously this includes more people. I think that having the the kind of community qualifiers was great though I, I do think that was good and you know getting to see people you wouldn't normally see like people like RTSD who obviously is a good coach doesn't play in champs ladder and I think he played solidly this game absolutely didn't you know took, took the chance that he had and everything um, yeah played played pretty fine and I think Elm Elm played fine too but I think he was maybe a little bit too conservative at points that you know because he got the worst look I think he had to uh, had to push had to push his luck at points to try and get back into it. And maybe maybe he didn't do that. And maybe he just kind of like, you know, basically uh, like 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 somebody like somebody in poker who doesn't want to go out in the bubble, you know, he just let his chips erode without really taking a shot at winning it. Maybe uh, that's maybe a bit harsh, but he definitely did have, have the worst luck. I think RTSD had the better luck, but I think he also played well. So congrats to him. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic.